Hello, um, I'm just going to try and make a quick video here. My videos are never quick, um, but I just want to go over the uh, installation, the assembly, uh, and have a quick look at the use of the Reboy, just in an uninterrupted start to finish format. So uh, this is a companion video for my Kickstarter for the Reboy kit. Um, this is everything you'll need to make a Reboy, um, but just to separate out the kit from the other parts. Um, not included in the kit is a Game Boy Color shell. Um, this is one I got from AliExpress. It's a third party aftermarket kit. Um, just means you can go to town with whatever kind of colors and flavors you want for <laughs> the various different parts of your Reboy. You'll also need a Raspberry Pi Zero. I think, I feel like there are lots of Raspberry Pi Zeros languishing in parts bins around the world. It is a very strange device designed to be used in an embedded format like this. So yeah, even if you haven't got Raspberry Pi, it's one of the cheapest Raspberry Pis they make, and they're all back in stock now after the uh, the COVID shortages that plagued us for years. So that's those two parts aside. Everything else left here is what is included in the Reboy kit. Everything you see here is a reward for this Kickstarter. Um, so there's a couple of different things that I've made and a couple of different things I haven't. So we've got some batteries and a display. Those are just parts that I've sourced. Um, but the PCB, uh, the a cartridge shroud, this little bracket in here, and a bunch of nuts and bolts um, are all things that I've uh, designed in a way to fit together. So I've already started assembly here. I've attached this white 3D printed piece to the PCB just because it's long, it's just doing up five nuts. Um, so you see there's bolts going through this piece, through the PCB, and are tightened up on the back here. But you can see those bolts protrude a little further, and that's how we're going to anchor the Raspberry Pi onto the motherboard. Uh, but before we can do that, the first thing we have to do is attach the display. So the display just um, pokes through the back here, like that. And then there's a little um, flat flex connector on the back. This is much harder to do with a camera in front of you. There you go. So you just cinch up the flat flex connector. And that's it. That's the display connected to the motherboard. The display then just sits inside this 3D printed piece. Uh, just to note, so the speaker will come uh, either pre-soldered to the motherboard or I'll find a way of doing it with like screw terminals or something. Um, so yeah, it's all the, the motherboard is designed to arrive totally fully assembled. No soldering required. Um, next thing we can do is attach the Raspberry Pi Zero. So we'll have a look at this side now. I think I might just bring you down a little bit as well. Yeah, sort of works, doesn't it? So um, this is a Raspberry Pi Zero. It's an entire computer and <laughs> the joys of living in London. Um, and it makes electrical connection to the motherboard through these pogo pins here. And it's attached to the motherboard via these bolts that also attach to the front bracket. Let's go ahead and drop that on there. Oh, no, we won't. First of all, we need to put these little posts in. So these little sleeves hold the Raspberry Pi at the appropriate distance from everything else. I just need to tighten up that bolt quickly. There we go. Uh, I've actually found a much better way of doing it than this, um, which is why I've gone to Kickstarter, because I, <laughs> I need to know if it's worth my time to implement it and reprototype it. Um, I'm going to use, rather than little standoffs and bolts, I'm going to use these little posts. So you see, this is like a little threaded post. So that way you can screw into the post from both sides without the need for, for a nut on top. Um, this is my prototype. This is what we've got in front of us. So let's now, now we've got these little sleeves in place, we're going to pop the Raspberry Pi on top. And we're just going to try and do up a couple of these little nuts. There we go. That's one down. And there's this little bridge piece on here over the GPIO connector. Give it a little wiggle. There we are. Pop a little nut over there. There we are. Another one here. As I said, I've come up with a much better way to do this. This is very fiddly. Not impossible. Probably much easier without a camera in front of you. So 
So there we go. Without doing any soldering, we've made a mechanical connection between my motherboard and the Raspberry Pi Zero. So I'm just going to check this is all connected and working ahead of the rest of the installation. Just bring you back up there. So I'm just going to use my benchtop power supply connected to the battery terminals on here like that. I turn on the power supply and I'm gonna, oh, it was already on. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see that. Um, the green light for the Raspberry Pi has come on. You can see these other lights coming up as well. There's a little light down there. This thing is covered in indicator lights for prototyping, just so I know which systems are up and running. Um, I sort of like them, so I might kind of keep them. I might make them optional. <laughs> so you can either, um, you know, you can disable them or leave them enabled. Uh, let's just make sure that the screen is doing what it's supposed to do, and it is. So that's perfect. That's all the electrical connections made. Everything is up and running. So let's shell this thing inside a Game Boy Color shell. So the first thing you need to do is just pop all your little buttons in here. Again, you could use an original Game Boy Color. There's no reason to stop you. But um, yeah, the, these third-party aftermarket cases are just yeah, much more available. There is a little bit of work you'll have to do in here just to remove a little bit of plastic. So if you see sort of around the screen here, not on all four sides, but just at the top and the bottom, you need to trim away a little bit of plastic. Uh, I've done several tests and I'm confident that I can uh, put together a video tutorial on how to do that with nothing but a pair of flush cutters. It's not that complicated at all. Um, so we can go ahead and pop the motherboard inside here now. Make sure the speaker's in there. There we go, that's all down nicely. And we're just gonna secure that in place with a little screw. All using the same standoffs and posts that, you know, the original Game Boy would have used. Pop that in there. I'm not going to put all the screws in. Again, I'm trying to do this in somewhat of a, <laughs> a speedy fashion. So that's our motherboard, our Raspberry Pi Zero, mounted inside the front shell of the case. Now, the last bit, so to avoid chopping up a whole bunch of plastic, so literally removing that little bit of plastic around the screen is the only place you need to touch the, um, to touch the enclosure of the Game Boy. In order to do that, I've made the Raspberry Pi Zero fit in the game slot. So that sort of sticks out, pokes out there. It's quite a clever use of space. However, that's just pointless there, isn't it? It's just gonna get damaged. So we've got this. Include one of these in every kit. Um, I'm not gonna produce them in red like this one is. I'm gonna produce them in gray, the original gray like the uh, Game Boy cartridge and in clear like the original Game Boy color cartridge. But you can see here, it's got a similar sort of design. I'm not gonna write Nintendo on it for obvious reasons i like my knees far too much um so this thing here just literally lives inside the back shell of the case and it gives that sort of original look to the game boy i love the idea that you could um sort of really customize this part i will make the 3d files available if you wanted to make yourself an, you know uh, a cartridge or a fake cartridge in uh, a unique color and of course with just a printer and some sticky back uh, paper you could print yourself off some cart art to go on the back there as well so you could re uh, replicate your favorite game once that's in there we can then go ahead and make sure the uh, the power switch is installed in fact we'll just turn it off because it was on there wasn't it so then i wouldn't recommend doing this install you know on a moving you know move in the back of a moving car but it's not overly complicated and we're just going to slide these two parts together -da. there we are that's everything inside our game boy so i'm just going to um tighten down a couple of these screws Again, there's six screws that secure the two halves of the Game Boy Color together. I'm only gonna use two just to try and keep this video informative and quick. There we go. All right, so we've now got everything buttoned up inside our Game Boy Color case. So let's pop some power in and see what we have on the SD card of this Raspberry Pi. 
There will obviously be a, uh, a setup configuration uh, process. I, uh, I've been uh, learning how to make bash scripts. I think I can get everything done with just a single line of code. So you'll, um, you'll put whatever operating system you want to run on the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero, and then you'll run uh, my installation script and it will set up all of, the, all of the other devices. It'll sort the screen out. It'll sort the Raspberry Pi Pico out. Ah, we're running RetroPie. <laughs> Apparently I don't like my knees quite so much. Um, so yeah, this is just another uh, printer. You can put, you, could, you can run anything on here that you can run on a Raspberry Pi Zero. You could put Linux on here. You could put a distro like this, like RetroPie, which is an emulation focused um, thing. I'm not saying that uh, you should use the, the Reboy <laughs> to play retro games, but of course you can. You'll see here I've got a bunch of emulators on. Um, the buttons all just kick right up and work um, because the, uh, the RP2040 on the motherboard is acting as a keyboard emulator. So as far as the Raspberry Pi is concerned, it's got a USB keyboard attached, and that's, what's, that's what the, the buttons are doing. So you see I've got a couple of emulators on here, but I'm not going to attempt to fade any further. I'm going to have a look at my favourites, and we've got Halley Wars for the Game Gear, a game I do actually own a physical copy of, so I'm, so I'm uh, legally allowed to emulate it. Anyone that's used RetroPie before will be familiar with this. It's the one downside of using a computer to do all this is that it does just take a moment to boot, but you know, it's it's less than a minute and you're in there. So you can hear the sound kicks, uh, kicked up as well. There's a little volume control here. This controls the system volume. So again, this is like another um, keyboard press. This uh, emulates the volume up and volume down buttons you might find on a keyboard. And it's also where you can adjust the, the screen backlight. If we just go ahead here and start the game off, you can see that we are emulating some Sega software. <laughs> in a format that looks very much like a Nintendo piece of hardware. Man, everyone's got their sort of favourite game from the childhood, haven't they? Me and my brother played this for thousands of hours. And we're never able to get past the second level. And even now I'm uh, much older and smellier, <laughs> 35 years later, um, I still can't get past the second level of this game. No saves. <laughs> Three lives. Try to get the high score. Proper stuff. So that's the Reboy. Um, it's a Raspberry Pi inside a Game Boy. <laughs> I don't really know much else to tell you. Um, it's a kit, so, you know, just to avoid, so to make it sort of affordable, basically. Um, I also don't think I could really sell this thing. I think Nintendo might have something to say about that. But a kit for you to put your own electronics inside a, a, an old fashioned um, enclosure. It should be absolutely fine. It's a use for the Raspberry Pi Zero. It includes a screen, it includes some AA batteries. Oh yeah, and uh, the one difference that you might see from this to a, a, a real Game Boy Color is that there's now a USB-C port, ah, where the uh, link cable used to go. Um, you can use this to attach you know, thumb drives. So you could use it to transfer data onto the Raspberry Pi Zero, but you could also use it to charge. You'll see there's a, a couple of lights inside here that didn't come on earlier. And if we plug in a USB-C uh, connected to a USB PD charger, there you go. <laughs> Again, it's a prototype. Um, so yeah, we're doing um, battery charging here as well. And then um, because I forgot to put a diode in, um, when you plug it into charge, the whole system comes to life as well. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I've got that all worked out. It is actually it's actually negotiating USB PD because um, of course two batteries in series is not the uh, the five volts that you're we're normally used to working with. Reboy, it's a Raspberry Pi in a Game Boy with a USB C port and a RP twenty forty microcontroller on board, ostensibly there to be a, a keyboard emulator for the face buttons. Um, but you know I'm going to break out some GPIO pins from the Raspberry Pi Zero, so you, uh, from the RP twenty forty. So you could do um, RGB lighting. You could do sort of whatever you like, really. Um, that's my Reboy. Um, and I'm selling these, or well, I'm trying to get these, uh, I'm trying to get a first run done of the kit that is required uh, to tie all of this together into something that I call the Reboy. And that is this Kickstarter that you're probably on the page for right now. Um, thank you for sitting through all of that. I hope that answers any questions that the main video might have left you with. Um, if it hasn't, uh, let me know and I'll, um, I'll start filling out that FAQ. Thank you very much. Um, I love you. Bye bye. <laughs>